Got us a giveaway, so just you wait. We'll mark it down below where you can actually jump ahead and just find the information on the giveaway. There you go. Hello and welcome back to Shelf Center. This is Bryce. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for liking and subscribing. This is something you end up enjoying. You never know it could happen. And today is another episode. It's been a bit <laughs> for Top Shelf News. That's right. The latest in science fiction, fantasy, sometimes horror, as mostly it relates to books, but also to media. But the biggest news is, yes, I did get a haircut. It's been a long time coming and it's summer, so I'm feeling it and feeling great. So anyway, Thanks in advance, I appreciate it. Let's jump into the news on the books, let's do it. First things first, I just saw this kind of going around and I thought I better comment on it because it's George R. R. Martin and he so rarely mentions Winds of Winter even though that's probably the most searched for thing uh, I have no proof, but the most searched for thing on his blog, the not a blog, uh, I would I would imagine. At least was for me for many years, and then you kind of just give up. So <laughs> he did mention just kind of in passing because he's been posting about all the latest casting news for the Dunk and Egg, the Night of the Seven Kingdoms series that's coming out with HBO. Yet another follow-up series. I think that's going to be great, to be honest. I mean... These novellas are just so much fun. I've read them all, and he mentions that he plans to write more. He's mentioned this before, and kind of the plan was kind of write him in between the big volumes, not unlike Sanderson does, just on the opposite timeline of taking 10 years. And so I it would just comment that just it's one of those where you go, well, anyway, he said. He plans on writing more Duncan Egg novellas after Winds of Winter, which, again, I appreciate him stating. He did say if the first season goes well, it'll be greenlit to have, I mean, the first book is The Hedge Knight, which apparently is what the first season will be based on, and it's not going to be as long as the seasons of, like, Games of Th Game of Thrones, because, again, we're talking about a novella, uh, so it's shorter seasons here. Again, he mentions, um, but then if this goes well, then we'll have The Sworn Sword and The Mystery Knight, all of which are great novellas. They're absolutely fun um, and a great way to get into the, the, the they're not the same. I think they're going to be a little more tongue in cheek, a little more fun, uh, like happy fun. Uh, you know, <laughs> like I, I loved many, many episodes and even seasons of Game of Thrones. It's just that they fumbled the ball so badly on the ending. But I just, I find it funny when people who haven't finished the book that everyone's waiting for, that everyone's debating that he will even ever finish. I saw it posted somewhere or someone said somewhere. Uh, most believe that Winds of Winter will get published, but almost no one believes A Dream of Spring will get published. Because as, as you probably know, there are seven books planned in the Song of Ice and Fire series. We have five out so far. It's been how many years since uh, book five came out? And we're still waiting on book six, which is Winds of Winter. And then after that would be a dream of spring unless he pulls you know robert jordan who kept saying this will be the last one and then it would be like i need a couple more and um and we know how that goes and, and again luckily we have brandon sander to send to finish um but it's just like i don't know i'm just any statements that these authors make who haven't done a lot lately uh, Patrick Rothfuss comes to mind, springs to mind just a little bit, where he will talk about the future series that he plans to make and, 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 and write in the same universe, and you're like, well, you got to finish the one that we're all waiting on, or the one that is your biggest sense of stress, it seems like, but we still aren't there. Uh, it's just, I don't know, I don't know what is in their brains, and I'm like, I would just shut up, I guess, and... They will mention it. I think part of it is because he wants to get the, like, he wants to ramp people up and get everyone excited for the Dunkin' Egg show. He's probably a producer, I assume. He, I think he became a producer for Game of Thrones and does make a healthy amount of money off of that. Um, and so he has every incentive to promote it. And one of those incentives, you know, pr promotional ways he can do it is say, hey, I'm going to, there's going to be more. There's plenty more. I got lots in me. Uh, and, but, I don't, like, does it? Especially if he's promising after Winds of Winter. First of all, we saw how that went when, uh, you know, the whole series was supposed to be done before the ending of Game of Thrones, and it just seems like when something was really into production, and maybe, maybe he's getting used to it, maybe it's fine now, but 
we saw that once things go into production, it, he gets busier. He gets things get worse. There's more things on his time frame, and he doesn't get things finished, and or he gets more stressed out about it because the pressure now has just ballooned. It's gone exponential on him to where everybody and their dog is now excited for the next whatever and that seems to get to him more than anything <laughs> and that's why we don't have our books but speaking of there was just kind of some i think it was talking thrones i was watching the video on they they did bring up an old video of george r martin talking about who would who would replace him and basically he was like no i don't want anyone to play to replace me and you know his wife i don't think he's gone i wouldn't i don't think she would even you know uh, put someone in charge of that but as we all know especially when uh you know we we run into you know the copyrights over and we've, we've got those protections out of the way someone could someone could take it on someone could whatever we could inevitably let's be honest have someone pick up the reins i think when people do mention brandon sanderson i don't i don't know i just he did great on robert jordan they're kind of similar styles and and approaches to some degree at least i just see brandon sanderson and george r martin being so polar opposite that doesn't make sense i would say joe abercrombie but i'll be honest i'd rather have joe abercrombie writing joe abercrombie books so that's the thing and that you know, it takes away from what they're doing actively, and I would rather have the popular author that I like writing their own things. Uh, that's what they're doing great at. Uh, so that's hard. That's a hard one. Obviously, uh, having an ending is important and would be good. The problem, too, is does George R. R. Martin write any notes about anything? Are there any? I honestly, it seems like a lot is just. Uh, he's just planting this garden and seeing what grows um, he's probably got some notes there and maybe you know sometimes I wonder if like the best might just be to be like hey keep it epic keep it in your imagination but here's generally where it would go you know we're re we'll publish his notes or something it's probably the worst uh, worst way to go I, I know wanted to uh, you know point this out I, I actually I own this on audiobook I need to read it already I've heard all kinds of people gush about it Dungeon Crawler Carl, Matt Dineman, has gone traditional. It used to be just independently published, and maybe he's retained some of those rights and whatnot, but uh, we've got a new cover. I'll be honest, it's pretty boring. It doesn't really do a lot for me. Not the biggest fan. I will still read it. I still plan to read it. I've seen a lot of great covers, especially there's some special edition out there. But, I mean, it's the the... The main covers for these are just kind of, I don't know, they just seem fitting, and I haven't even read it. And there I am, right, going, they, but they seem more fitting. I could be completely wrong. But this one just seems kind of meh. Like, what is what is even the, I don't know, I don't know, what are we going for? It's just not as, as fun and looking as the other stuff. So anyway, we'll see. What do you think? I could be wrong. I'm fine being wrong on this. Then I wanted to point out, this has been pointed out by a couple, new book by Fonda Lee and Shannon Lee. Breath of the Dragon. It's Bruce Lee inspired. Shannon Lee, I had to do my own research and then it was verified by a couple sources. I think Daniel Green even. Shannon Lee being the daughter of Bruce Lee. I'm a huge fan, love Bruce Lee. And I think that's super cool that they're doing uh, essentially a YA fantasy based on Bruce Lee characters. So that's at least what, that's what it says. Uh, so I think that's cool. I think it's about time Bruce Lee comes back uh, you know, to the limelight. We, you know, I just don't see him being talked about as much anymore. And I just, he's just such a legend. As far as I can tell, they're not related, even having the most common last name in the world. Uh, I would know being one of them. But anyway, that's exciting, very exciting. And you can see why I have that connection to Bruce Lee. <laughs> Finally, I wanted to point out we've got the release of the, the final release in one of the most epic fantasy series of all times. I, if you've been following the channel, you've heard me talk about it probably too much. I know. Uh, I can't help myself. I just love the series so much and I'm so excited for Janny Wirtz. I was able to appear on the live stream celebration just this last week and celebrate her publishing the final book, uh, Volume 11, Song of the Mysteries in the Wars of Light and Shadow. So I'm so excited for that. I'm so excited that here's what I'm going to do. I want to do a giveaway. Giveaway either this book or if you haven't read the series, Curse of the Mistwraith. I want to go hardcover in either one if I can find it at a reasonable price. So my thought is, here's what we're going to do. I can never get a good comment 
uh, giveaway going. Nobody responds, and it's well, it's hard to get responses back once you've picked your winner. So my thought is, send an email if you can, if you're willing to, uh, and we'll talk about uh, <laughs> some email and, and YouTube problems uh, that Mike of Mike's book reviews had um, in just a sec. But send an email to shelfcentered1 at gmail.com. I will list it below. You can also find it if you go through my contacts and go through the email. Um, but send me an email. Tell me which in the subject, which you're choosing, whether it's Song of the Mysteries or Curse of the Mistraith. Uh, you know, I, again, if it's reasonable, I, ha I haven't checked. I got to see. It might be a paperback if it's not reasonable in hardcover for Curse of the Mistraith. I know this one's pretty reasonable because I just bought it, a copy for myself, and I, I received this beautiful advanced reader copy from the publisher. So I'm very excited, just wanted to share the love and make sure I get some more Janie Wirtz fans that I can talk to, okay? That's all, that's all I want, I've been telling you about this. You know, also maybe once you read it, then you're gonna want the audiobooks of it and then you can be on me with, with pushing forward the audiobooks getting published. So anyway, one thing at a time, okay? But anyway, if you want to be part of that giveaway, let me know in the comments below, but also before like you're not even entered unless you send me that email okay send me the email then i can get back to you and make sure that you get your book either way so i'm excited to do that i think that'll be way fun all right then in the media that is one thing i wanted to talk about was uh, i figured this would fit maybe under more media than books i don't know but mike mike's book reviews had some trouble this weekend you probably already saw it uh lost a lot of subs but he got hacked got hacked and then they took over his 116,000 subscriber YouTube channel and turned it into cryptocurrency and they were doing live streams I mean this is like I mean dirty like some like some of these where I'm like they get you get hacked and it just feels like oh they're just playing with it oh these guys are ready to take advantage of that many subscribers uh, and up to and if you look at, at Mike uh, he he lost a ton because I'm sure a lot of people were like what am I subscribed to what did I accidentally because you couldn't tell they deleted everything um, so Mike had some good words of wisdom in his weekly update to just be careful with your security. I'm surprised that was a good time for like uh, an ad for like Virtual Shield or something that you always see on, on YouTube. Um, but anyway, definitely makes you think twice. And I think it sounds like Mike did all the precautions anyway and they still got through because you know, you don't want the same password for your email and your whatever account that you know is verifying. You need different things. But anymore, man, if they are going after you, especially when you have a healthy and popular YouTube channel, they will go after you. So man, I'm just glad they got it back. It sounds like there's still some problems working through. So, uh, but I do, I'm just so, so happy Mike is bouncing back right away. I, I knew, I mean, let's be honest, he'd bounce back anyway. That would be a huge frustration and, you know, but I, I could see him bouncing back within a couple months anyway because of who he is uh, and, you know, and how well loved he is. So, uh, but it's just nobody wants to do that, and why would you have to? And it makes me crazy that like it's like use those talents for for good instead of evil. Why? Why is this the world we live in that you use? I mean, even like more so why you shouldn't trust any of this crypto crap <laughs> scheme thing. You know that they're willing to just hack a site and just go to town on it. I mean, this is just, it's appalling. I thought this was cool news, and uh, then we'll, we'll finish this video up here, but uh, Sigourney Weaver, she's been in Aliens, she's been in Avatar, she's been in a lot of huge sci-fi franchises, and, uh, you know, I like when people are like, she's been in Aliens and Gal Galaxy Quest. I'm like, that's what we're talking. Um, but is finally getting into the Star Wars universe, which I think is so cool. A Mandalorian Grogu movie. So if you haven't heard about that, there's a Mandalorian and Grogu movie in the works. Of course there is. It's a hugely successful TV show. Uh, and I think I'm excited for it. So we'll see what she plays and if she's recognizable in the role, because she could be anything. Um, I would assume they're going to make her recognizable to some degree. Um, you don't do that too much to a big star that you're announcing, right? Like with uh, the, what is it, The Force Awakens when they had tons of cameos. You know, people were stormtroopers and whatnot that are hugely famous actors. I think that's so cool. So much fun. I like to see that. I like to see that. I love Sigourney Weaver. I've been meaning to do another Aliens watch. I just, 
follow this Twitter, <laughs> whatever it's called anymore. Um, follow the, the account that goes through just the movies and the history on a movie. And it was great going through Alien and how it was developed. And then once Star Wars was popular, popular, then the script for Alien got greenlit like immediately. Uh, and then just how that came about and how it came together. Uh, and just how they recognized Sigourney Weaver. Like she was late to her audition because she got lost. And they like came and they were like, we've got her. That's it. That's her. So, and there's some big names that, um, that that tried to get the part. So I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's been the news for me. Definitely go check out the giveaway. I just want to spread the love. Uh, I, you know, there's this isn't for channel promotion, but obviously, uh, the more uh, people, the better for me. But not for you. So why would you share this? That would make zero sense to you. You want to win the book, believe me. So anyway, thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll catch you later. Bye.